Any letters, amen? amen? Any letters, amen? If you got it, bring it quickly. Ask the ushers to quickly make sure your name is on it, though. If you didn't bring your bills, if you, didn't, if you don't have bills, God bless you, amen? Ain't nothing like being debt-free. Amen? amen? It's like being sin-free. Somebody say amen. amen. You may not understand what I'm trying to say, amen? Bring them, let me anoint them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ooh, I got him, baby. I got him. I got him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Bring your name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You bring them, I'm going to anoint them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh my God, hallelujah. I feel the prayers being answered right now. You ain't pray. You don't have to be ashamed or afraid now. Amen. This ain't the end of the Sunday. If you have a letter next week, bring it. If you got a pillowcase, bring it. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe you got a melogram. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I believe God will answer your prayer. Amen. First Peter chapter 3. Amen. Now, I want you to look to somebody and say, the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are, upon you. are upon you. Look to somebody else and say, the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are, upon are upon you. Now, you may not think much of that, but when you stop and think of the human eye, it's one of the most complex organs uh, in the human body. I mean, it, it, it is so dynamic in its, in its origin in his creation, that it takes as many as 14 different specialties in the ophthalmology field to resolve some of your issues when it comes to your eyes. Amen. Oh, you don't hear me talking this morning. Amen. I'm telling you, so many things can go wrong with your eyes. But you have to understand one thing, that God that made eyes, I think the word said, can he not see? Right. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I mean, God got a way of giving you an organ in your body. Hallelujah. Amen. God got a way of giving me an organ. I'll take these. God bless you. Amen. God got a way of putting organs in your body. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and allowing uh, the, 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 the various uh, rays of the sun to come in a form in which it transport through light and run down the occipital lobe down the back of your eye into the back of your brain and turn it around all in a blink to allow you to see what you see. Now that's the God we serve. There's an anterior, there's a posterior, and God can weigh the balance in between. And if it's too pressure on one side, it can call elevated pressure, and too much pressure on the other side, it can call depressed pressure that can cause problems with the optic nerve. Am I not talking right? They can cause damage beyond repair. Uh, there are elevated pressure that can cause glaucoma, that can cause you to lose peripheral vision. That's what they call tunnel vision. But the God I'm talking about is the God that knows all about eyes. Hallelujah. And the eyes of the Lord ain't going to never develop no cataracts. He ain't got to worry about no kind of stigmatism. God that we serve don't need glasses because he got more than 2020. Oh, come on, somebody. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. Oh, hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord are watching you. It doesn't matter where you go. God sees you. Oh, don't y'all get nervous with me now. Look at somebody and say, God can see in Egyptian darkness. See, some of y'all think God can't see in the dark. But his eyes illuminate the darkness. Somebody say amen. You see, God knows all about the eyelids. He put them eyebrows over your eyes so when you sweat, the sweat wouldn't go directly into your eye. Amen. He put eyelashes, and some people get carried away. Oh, Lord, have mercy, God. Forgive me. I, I see these women, they try to beautify themselves, and they already look nice, but they got eyelashes sticking out like windshield wipers. Amen. And I'm saying, what in the world? Lord, have mercy. But you see, you have to understand that God gave you what you got. And you have to take care and maintain what he gave you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't get but one pair of eyes, amen. And God knew that there was a chance, a possibility. You might lose one. That's why he gave you two. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Even the government said if you lose one or lose your sight, we can compensate you. 
Even if you got good insurance, come on somebody, a good policy, they can give you some money if you lose maybe one of your eyes or both of your eyes. Amen. Oh my God, we're going to talk about the blind leading the blind. Come on somebody. But ain't nobody blind in here. Come on somebody. Because we all see what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. Look at somebody and say, the eyes, the eyes of the Lord, of the Lord are, upon you. are upon you. Now, if he, they're upon you, then he's watching you. That means he's watching you and you should be conscious of his watch. Amen. Amen. You might not want to hear this and some of y'all might get a bit, a bit upset, but you know I really don't care because uh, them days uh, pass me now. Amen. All I'm trying to do is keep my mind on Jesus. Amen. Sometimes uh, people do things, I wonder why they do things, but I say, God, you take care of them because you see them. Now, if God, as the song has said, uh, in amazing grace, if his eyes are on the sparrow, yeah. don't you know his eyes is watching you? Right. And the word teaches us that your soul is more precious yeah. than many sparrows. Amen. Now, I have to admit one thing that I cheat a little bit. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm saying that uh, in my yard, I'm always throwing crumbs and bread out to the sparrows. So if he's watching them, then I want to be where he's watching. But I know he's watching me regardless of the sparrows. I just wanted you to know I was cheating a little bit because I'm, I'm feeding the birds. Come on, somebody. And the God that takes care of the bird, can he not take care of you? Amen. See, see sometimes we need to be warned of what God is doing. Amen. All right, watch me where, where, where we go through this word. First Peter chapter 3. You got it by now. Amen. You got to be careful because we're living in a day and time where you got to know God's word for yourself. And oftentimes God is seeing you and I warnings. Warnings to let us know that we need to stay obedient. Everybody said, stay obedient. It's important that you stay obedient. Obedient is better than sacrifice. Any sacrifice you can make sounds good. But it's better to be more obedient than to make a sacrifice. And to hearken or to listen to God is better than the fat of the ram. Amen. And let me just tell you something. The fat of the ram that goes on the altar during the time of sacrifices in the Old Testament time, that fat belonged to God. Right. I remember, and I, you heard me say this before, when we were a kid, we, used to, we didn't get too much meat back in them days. Uh, it was only beans and bread. Praise God, so beans and bread can sustain you. Yeah. But every now and then, when mama would open up one of them big cans of pork and beans, there'd be a big old piece of fat back in there. Am I talking right? And, and everybody would be watching that fat. And they said, don't eat that fat, that ain't yours. Oh, come on, somebody. But don't turn your back when the fat is on the plate. Oh, come on, somebody. There were 10 miles that need to be fed. Hallelujah. And my mama could cook beans even while she was at work. I knew what I'm talking about. She would call my sister up. Where you going with this, Pastor? I'm saying God watching everything. My mama could be at work work, working, and she would tell my sister when to add waters to the beans. Oh, my God. Y'all don't know what I'm trying to say. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Mm, took me back. I had flashbacks just then. Chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 39. I'm sorry, starting at 39. First Peter, right? I mean, chapter 3, verse 8, I'm sorry. Chapter 3, verse 8. Starting at verse 8. You ready? Okay, if you're ready, say amen. amen. Paul, uh, uh, Peter here is characterized it said, finally, uh, uh, finally be ye all one mind. One mind. Having compassion, a love, a caring one for another. Love as a brother. Be pitiful, mean being tenderhearted. Be courteous. Oh, come on, somebody. It's going to take a lot of energy to go out of your way. But guess who's watching you going out of your way? Not rendering evil for evil. There are people like that, you know. You get evil with me, I get evil with you. 
You rail on me, I'll rail on you. You do the dirty dozen on me, I do the dirty dozen on you. I'll talk about your mom and your dad and your grandmama. Oh, come on, somebody. But contrary wise, go against the grain, show for a blessing, knowing that ye are there unto call, that ye should inherit a blessing. I don't know about you, but I thank God for my inherent blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says in verse 10 here, stay with me for a moment. For ye, but, but, but he says, for he that will love life and see good days. Now, if you love life, everybody say, I love life because life is good. See, if you don't speak it, it ain't going to happen. Say, I love life because life is good. You know, those two brothers made a living called uh, Life is Good. Yes. Am I right? Yes. And, and, and they had a saying, do what you like and like what you do. Ain't that right, Mariah? Because yes. Mariah bought me a hat like that. I had old one I wore and wore and got ragged, and she bought me another one. Yes. Amen. God bless her soul. Amen. Her money, she went and bought me one. And I didn't like the color she bought me. She went back and changed and got the color I like. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Yes. God is good and life is good. Amen. Them guys have made millions of dollars, them two brothers, on life is good. Life is good, amen? For he says here, for he that will love life and see good days. If you want to live life, a long life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lips that speak no God. Don't speak no falsehood. Let him eschew or hate evil or let him uh, turn away from evil and do good. Everybody say, Lord, let that add to my soul. Lord, let, to my soul. let him seek peace. Let him seek peace. And when you find peace, you thought the drink insure was something that you drink, but insure is something that you practice. Am I talking right? And insure it. Amen. Seek peace. Stick with it. Live with it. Come on, love it. And be at peace with it. Amen. Amen. And then he says, for the eye. Everybody say the eye the of the Lord are over what? The eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. Everybody say the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Now if his eyes are over the righteous, then what you think his ears are doing? His ears are open until their prayer. Everybody said, not only is he looking at me, then he, he, he heard my prayer. But the face, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I mean, the world is in trouble. They got God looking at them, but God don't look at you and I that are righteous the same way he look at those who are evil. Oh, come on, somebody. So when you ask God for something, he already know what you need even before you ask. Before you can get your words together, get your thoughts together, get your mind together to ask God to intercede, God has already moved on your behalf. Because the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears. Why would God give you eye and me eyes and ears if he didn't have none? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that means he know what you need because he know who you are. Amen. And he created you in his own image. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going right, right down to verse 22. Stay with me. Amen. Now that's my highlight. That's my highlight. Verse 12. And who is he that will harm you? Who is he around you to think they can hurt you, can bring you harm? Peter's trying to tell the church something here. There are many out after you, but they can't harm you. There are many out there trying to do you harm, but they can't do you nothing. Well, come on, somebody. That be like the prophet Baal. When he go to curse, they can't do nothing but bless. That be like those who hate you to your guts, but they can't do nothing about it. And who is he that will harm you if he be a followers of that which is good? I mean, this is right down the line. 
But if ye suffer for righteousness sake, you ought to get happy. Amen. Happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. But he says in verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your what? You got to put him in your heart and sanctify him there. Amen. Hallelujah. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of a hope that, in, that is in that you will uh, with meekness and with fear. Amen. Verse 16 says, having a good conscience. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with having a good conscience. Amen. I don't like guilt because I was told guilt will kill you quicker than anything in the medicine cabinet. I'm not saying that's from the scripture, but I'm just trying to tell you what I grew up with. Amen. Them old folks back then would make you and tell you and say things to you, and God forbid when they looked at you and they point their finger. You were in trouble already. You almost wanted to go home and cry and repent. Amen. They tell you God going to get you, boy, and you be standing up there looking already shaking. Amen. Because you're already wrong. Come on, somebody. But a good conscience towards God will straighten out everything. Amen. Having a good conscience that where they speak evil of you as an evildoer, they may be ashamed. They falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. I think David said, Lord, show me a token. Show me a token for good that them that hate me may see it and be ashamed. Some people hate you. They know they hate you. They don't care to look at you. They don't like the way you walk. They don't like the way you talk. And when you got somewhere to stand for, they don't even like when you got to stand for what's right. But guess what? They can't do you no harm. All they can do is look at you, fume, and look greasy and mad. They can't do nothing about you. And you big and bad enough to say try it if you want to. Come on, somebody. Because I know many men in the Bible got whooped and messed up by messing with an anointed man of God. I got proof now. Don't tell me. I don't say stuff unless I can back it up. Come on, somebody. Stay with me now here. I got to carry it away there for me. Verse 18, and Christ, I'm sorry, verse 17, for it is better if the will of God be so. So that ye suffer for well-doing than for doing evil. Yes. Ain't that right? Yes. You know, people who are locked up or incarcerated, many times when they first get arrested, the first thing they say, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't hear no amen. Can I get a house amen? amen. All right, that's much better, amen. I didn't do it, and when they're on lockdown, I didn't do it all the time they're locked down because they're in denial. And denial is one of those displaced behaviors. Oh, I'm going to talk about that too. I'm going to talk a little psychology in a minute. Verse 18 says, For Christ also had once suffered for our sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to the God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. I love that. I mean, I had a guy bring me a question this week. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, too. I mean, some, some, he was asking a serious question because he's serious about his salvation. But he said it's something a preacher said to him while he was back home over there in Oklahoma. And he got troubled by that. So he brought it to me. I mean, you know me. I ain't going to cut no corners. Amen. I'm just going to bring it out just like that. Amen. Right. And he said, I knew he won't talk it right. I said, that's why you got to read and know the Bible for yourself. Amen? But which also in verse 19, he went and preached unto the spirits in the prisons. Those were that who lost out in the beginning. Amen? Who didn't get the salvation preached to them like they're being preached today. So there ain't no excuse why people can't get saved today because preachers are everywhere. Ministers and evangelists are everywhere. Bishops and pastors are everywhere proclaiming God's word. And there ain't no way somebody can live 75 years and die, take their life, and say they ain't never heard about Christ. Amen. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was prepared, wherein few, and that is eight souls, were saved by water. Yes. Verse 21 and 22 says, 
The like figure whereunto even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answering of a good what? Conscious towards God. So if you were going out in the water and you ain't right, ain't planning on getting right, you went down a center, going to come up a wet center. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. But when your heart is right Amen. and you mean business with God and you want a, a good conscience towards God, the outward manifestation of a water baptism is a show for a pure conscience towards God. God knows you're going to have some issues in life. God knows you're going to do some wrong things. Come on, somebody. God knows you're going to deal with some issues. Go find you in a bad spot. Yes. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be a slave to sin. Amen. You don't need to let sin control your life. Yes. But if you're going to be a slave, be a slave to righteousness. Yes. 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 Live what is right and do what is right. Even if it moves you in a place you really don't want to be. Because in the end, you're going to have a good conscience towards God. Amen. Sometimes your conscience will eat you up and won't let you sleep at night. Amen. Ah, somebody said, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 21 says, like the figure way in even baptism. Verse 22 says, I'm sorry, verse 21 it says, and conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 22. Stay with me. Who is gone unto the heavens and is on the right hand of God. That's right. Angels, we're talking about them angels again. Last week we learned that the angels go in and, and look into your matters. Ain't that right? Amen. See, God is always watching, but he got angels to testify. Amen. 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 Who's gone into the heavens and in the right hand of the Father of God Angels and authorities and power being made subject unto who? Yeah. See, all power is subject unto Christ yeah. because of what he did for you and me on the cross. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, it's a wonderful thing to know that God loves you in spite of yourself. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing to know that God, our sin is only begotten son on your behalf and my behalf, that we might have eternal life through his name. So regardless of what you've done or what's been taking place in your life, God loves you in spite of. God cares for you in spite of. Regardless of what trouble you got in last night or last week, God loves you just the same. Because God not only loves you a backslider, God is married to you for all eternity. God said, I love you the same way that Jose loved Goma. God said, I love you the same way Christ loved the church. God said, I love you the same way I love Israel. And though she had sown the wind, though she had been in a disgusting place, though she had run after her lovers, come on, somebody, God said, I still love you. I mean, who wants somebody done so bad? Come on, somebody. Who wants something that somebody done throw away? Who wants somebody that been messing around? Who wants somebody that been fornicating and everybody been slobbing on them? But God said, I'll take you anyhow. God said, I'll take that sin. I'll take that wrongdoing. I'll take that bad luck. I'll take that no luck. I'll take your no relationship. I'll take you as you are. God said, I'll give you, I'll give you beauty. I'll make you look good. I'll take that raggedy ways. I'll take them old ways. I'll take them bad behavior. I'll take them simple ways. I'll take your looks and I'll give you beauty. I'll give you beauty for ashes. You're giving God nothing, but God is giving you something back. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying the eyes of the Lord are upon you. Yes. Don't think for one minute you've done something, uh, been somewhere that God ain't seen you. He saw you when you turned the corner. Amen. Come on, somebody. You don't think God see you when you turn the corner? He see you when you're going and coming. Amen. My Bible tell me that God weigh your spirit. Amen. In other words, God weighed the motivation of the things you do. Whether it's for personal gain, whether it's to get even with somebody. 
Come on, somebody, whether you've been fooling around or messing around or got messed up or jacked up. Come on, somebody. Oh, you didn't want to hear it, so if you're mad with me, just stay mad with me because I ain't finished with you yet, amen. I'm going to step all over your feet, your toes, amen. I might jump back and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. But I'm still going to come right back up on you, amen. I'm going to get all up in your zone and talk about things that you don't like today. Why? Because God sees everything. Ain't nothing hidden from God. You laying up and slipping up, come on, somebody. You might wind up messing up, and you can lose out. The Bible said, what profit of a man if he can gain this whole world? The God we serve has no respect. Some people think that they can do things and please God and do anything and think that God is well pleased and God is not happy. God said, I'm that morning dew and I'm that setting sun. Come on, somebody. I'm the snow on the white countenance uh, around the globe, and I'm the God that got billions and trillions of stars that I named them all in the universe. 